Hey y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler. You have arrived at a new day in our zine project that is based on this amazing book by CZT Brian Crimmins called Zentangled Dingbats Patterns and Projects for Dynamic Tangled Ornaments and Decorations. Now, being me, <laughs> I did not get the camera turned on at the right time. So I have uh, already started the tangle, and this is the tangle that we did the step out video on for Tuesday called Fairy Wing, and so if you didn't catch that video, feel free to check it out. And uh, I do a slow, uh, I do a slow step-by-step uh, -step instructional video for how to draw this tangle. It's really pretty, but um, I keep feeling it's unfinished, and um, I just feel like I'm not doing it justice, or at least I felt like I didn't yesterday. So I wanted to challenge myself to find a way to make this um, more dynamic, which is a good word for this. So you have joined me in the process of drawing the little figure eight um, symbols into the into each place where these uh, two lines intersect and then after that I am putting these little petal shapes with points sort of like the ones in poke leaf these entangle original pattern and in the step out uh, they go through, this is by Joan Stark, and she does these little figure eights first all the way through, and then comes through again and adds the petal shapes, but I feel like it flows a little bit easier for me if I go ahead and uh, do it all each corner, if that makes any sense. So I guess for me, I'm a person that really appreciates tangles that have a lot of density, um, a lot of depth, a lot of overlap. And so one of my uh, challenges with this was to find a way to make it a little bit more exciting for me, uh, meaning that I just always feel it's a little unfinished. And that doesn't mean to, I don't mean to say that this isn't a beautiful pattern, it very much is, and um, perhaps I, I don't do it justice, but um, I'm going to attempt to um, sort of slog my way through and find something uh, beautiful in this. So the next step on this, <coughs> excuse me, is to add some embellishments and uh, the thing that Joan has in her step out next are these little uh, center inside auras or echo lines depending on how you want to look at it is technically those would be our uh, echo lines but I don't think anybody cares <laughs> and that's okay And so I'm going to, um, but what I found yesterday in uh, Tuesday's video was that it was a lot of fun to play around with the centers of these and uh, to embellish the, whoops, that's Simba checking in with you guys. I'm sure the neighbors are not appreciating him since it's about 10 o'clock at night. So what I'm going to do is try to vary this and embellish it or zenbellish it as Brian would say. See, I should have turned my should have turned my pages there. Uh, but that's an easy fix. And I'm going to try to add some fun to these and we're going to see what we come up with. 
you saw in the beginning picture that I ended up using a lot of mixed media in this and so that's going to be fun for you guys I hope and it's going to be interesting to see where we end up with this so what I've done here is I'm alternating every other one with the standard step out version of the center uh, part. And that leaves me a symmetrical way of adding something a little bit different here. And I think I decided to go with these little um, slightly curved marks, or lines or whatever. Um, this is hard for me when I work this small because I, I have trouble seeing where to start and stop on them. But uh, when I get finished with this, there are going to be a lot of layers in this. And so one of the things I really want to encourage you guys uh, with is to not give up on, on these uh, until you've completely finished them. Uh, I think I've mentioned before that art has an ugly stage frequently, almost always, has an ugly stage. And if you give up too soon, sometimes you give up in the middle of the ugly stage and you don't stick, stick it out to see what comes up in the end. So I really want to encourage you guys, when you're doing this kind of project, see if you can make it work for you. And you're going to see that I am going to try uh, several things, uh, some that work better than others. And I think what I came out with uh, is something that I'm fairly pleased with. I don't think this is probably going to be a go-to tangle for me, although it's very pretty. But uh, for me to be happy with it, it takes a lot of extra work, which really uh, distracts me from my zen. And uh, it's been a tough week for me this week, and I am looking for my zen. And finishing this up today really helped me to sort of get into a more chilled spot in my head. Um, I had a very hard Monday and Tuesday this week, and I am so sorry I missed you guys yesterday. That has not happened to me since I started regular uploads, and I really, really apologize to you guys. Uh, I will try to not let that happen again, but sometimes things are outside of our control, so I appreciate you being back with me today, and um, yeah, <laughs> I, uh, because of the stress I was under, I ended up with a, I don't know what you call the headaches when your blood pressure is high, but uh, it was really, really intense and bad, and I could barely open my eyes yesterday. I wasn't tolerating light of any kind, and working on the tablet was extremely painful. So um, I just, I had part of this video already recorded, but I couldn't even look at it long enough to edit. So it was, uh, it was tough for me, and I really felt bad yesterday. I wanted to let you guys know what was going on, but of course, uh, that's kind of hard to do from here. So now I am going to start adding some little embellishments here. And in her step out, I think she uses some simple um, little spirals out on these little tendrils instead of fescue, which is what I'm doing here. But again, if you watch the step out video from Tuesday, um, I went through some of these options and showed you the step out and I really, really, something sort of like that, but I really, really uh, liked the fescue addition to this. And um, so I'm going to use a combination of both and probably add mucha as well somewhere. And uh, we're going to see how busy this gets <laughs> before we're done. I want to thank some of you for the very well thought out comments uh, that you left regarding depression and uh, some of your coping mechanisms. And some of you had some good ones and, and, and some of you didn't share and that's okay. If, if that's not something you deal with, then you know, it's okay not to worry about that. Um, but I'm almost positive that 
if you don't suffer from it, you know somebody or have someone in your family that does. Um, it is that big an issue, I think. And uh, so I really, I really appreciated the heartfelt responses that I got on that. Thank you, um, all of you, for that. Um, also wanted to mention, while you're watching me sort of embellish here, uh, that that I did ha did some research earlier today about our Christmas project and have a couple of really fun uh, ornaments that we're going to do and uh, these will be of the origami type and uh, before we get to that I will try to publish a supply list of things that that will be helpful at least to use and uh, I will try to choose things that can be done with the things you have on hand uh, because I understand what it is to tangle on a budget and so I want to make these videos accessible to everyone whether you uh, have money to spend or not. Well, we're going to see what we come up with. It'll be fun. Also, uh, I am looking into the uh, series of Christmas cards um, that we might do. This uh, project would blend right into that type of thing very easily. And, uh, and, and of course, they don't have to be Christmas cards. They can say whatever you want. Um, I, I know we have people here from all over the world, and I don't want to um, forget that. Um, but almost everyone, I think, uh, celebrate some sort of holiday um, at the end of the year and so I thought we would do some greeting card type things or cards that you can send uh, to families and family and friends that would show a little bit of your talent off and uh, give them something that's really special. And if that's not your thing, and I'll tell you that there are some holidays that I am extremely bah humbug lately. That's been a big theme with us. But, um, you know, they can be used for many different things. So, you know, be thinking about that and what you'd like to do. And I will be trying to come up with some uh, good designs, although... After this zine project, I'm suspecting that you guys are going to have some really awesome ideas of your own. So now I've started adding a little bit of mucha here and there. And I like to just go from, from section to section, add a little bit here, add a little bit there. One of the reasons I'm adding the extra tendrils and decorations is because I felt uh, I didn't have enough density around these. And again, that is a personal preference of mine and the way that I've chosen to draw and the things that I personally like. And if you have different preferences, I suggest that you lead, go with them. Uh, let your creativity guide you. These are just uh, little fun little suggestions that I uh, thought up on off the cuff or um, on the fly or whatever uh, metaphor you want to use for that. Um, <clears throat> wait, that's not a metaphor. You guys know what I mean. Um, so I'm. What's going to happen is I'm going to go through this several times. And each time I'm going to focus on something different, but I will frequently uh, shift from one thing to another as I go, depending on what I feel each place needs. Now, this is sort of something, and those are kind of sad, but this is something that I have learned over time. And this is getting to an ugly stage. I've got lines that are out of whack, and I've got some things that are thicker than others, but I'm not going to despair about that. Um, I'm going to be able to uh, fix a lot of that with, with some line weight and uh, emphasizing different parts of this. 
Uh, I am going to use a mixed media approach on this, as I mentioned. We're going to use <coughs> we're going to use gel pens and uh, a little water blender, and uh, we're going to see what we end up with. And I may or may not add a word to this at some point. I don't know, but it's not going to be today. Thank you all for your well wishes, and I appreciate the support so much. Thank you also for those of you who have sent something for my little boy. I didn't realize that there was no way from a wish list uh, to send something directly to me, so you would need my email address or my address, and uh, I am happy to provide that to you if you would like to send something to him. So if you are not connected with me on Facebook so that you can send me messages on Messenger, um, please feel free to do that. And when you send the request, if it allows you to, you can say, you know, from your channel or something, YouTube, something like that. And that will let me know uh, how we know each other. Usually uh, when I accept friends there, I'm looking for um, if we have mutual friends. Uh, I tend to have a lot of mutual friends uh, from Zentangle enthusiasts all around, so uh, it wouldn't surprise me if we are already um, hooked up somewhere. And if not, I am excited to have you. I've had, uh, I was answering a few comments. I'm not done yet, guys, but I'm working on it from uh, some new people that have joined us, which is pretty awesome. Hey, Deb McClintock from Plano, Texas, or what was it, Wiley, Texas? Oh, there's nothing like a small town in Texas, girl. <laughs> Welcome. And uh, Barbara. I'm sorry, Barbara, I can't remember. Is it Kaplan? I can't remember your last name, I'm sorry. Uh, but we have several new people, and welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, each time I turn this, I'm going to reassess uh, what's kind of weak, uh, where do I want to add more, you know, do I, do I have them spread the way that I want to, and again, this is a completely intuitive process. There, there is no way to get this wrong. Your goal here is to make yourself happy. And when you feel like it is done and well done, then it is done and well done. Uh, I took this uh, quite a while because I didn't feel it was done for quite some time. And I'm still thinking about doing some drop shading around the whole thing to sort of finish it off. And so, um, you know, let your creativity guide you. Do what seems uh, awesome. Uh, I did want to mention, I did mention it on the Tuesday step out video on this uh, pattern that uh, Joan Stark used some zinger coming out of here, which I didn't, it didn't occur to me while I was doing this. And uh, I wish it had, because that would actually be cool. I think I mentioned my zingers get a little misshapen sometimes, but it, it sure does make them fun. All right, so here we go, part two. So after the first pass, now I'm going to go back around and I'm going to hmm, I'm still embellishing because who doesn't like embellishing when I was a kid my mom used to get really frustrated with me because I would decorate the kitchen and not sweep the floor <laughs> can I hear an amen girls or boys whoever decorated the kitchen I loved setting the table nicely, you know, making a nice meal, decorating. Decorating was always my thing. So uh, Zentangle is kind of a, a really awesome gift for me. I am able to decorate, decorate, decorate all I want, and it is so much fun. So I'm just trying out a couple of different techniques here. This is a dot dash dot dash thing, which I like to use a lot. A very simple thing that can dress something up. It's a great embellishment.
my little one is excited about his birthday. He is so pumped to be 10. It is awesome. Let's see. Put in a few dots. See what that looks like. And again, you can't do this wrong. You don't have to do anything the way I did it. You can do something entirely different. That is the great thing about Centangle. You cannot do it wrong. No mistakes. Only opportunities. There are no mistakes. Just opportunities to find something new, to try something new. And I love that philosophy. That is so freeing in art. I love the thoughtfulness with which the Zentangle method was put together because it focuses so much on important uh, artistic barriers that so many people have. Um, where to start on a blank sheet, uh, what to draw. Um, those things are things that will stop you from trying art right in your tracks because you don't know how to get started. And that was something that was blocking me from getting anywhere with drawing. And so this, and the fact that it doesn't have to look like anything, is another freeing thing. Because then you don't have uh, preconceived notions about where you're going. And you're able to just enjoy the drawing process. Again, that was a pivotal one for me. And the chill that you get, the zen, the relaxation is so amazing with this and uh, I saw somebody's comment about uh, where did I see that either in our comments or on Facebook I saw today something that somebody said about does anyone else feel like um, they don't get bored so much in, in when they're waiting around anymore uh, because they have their tangling supplies with them and that is so true of me I used to get so frustrated and so angry when I had to work, wait at doctor's offices or for other appointments, and I'm telling you, that has completely changed. I almost enjoy waiting now because I'm doing something that I love. So what I'm doing now is I'm dressing the mooka up just a tiny bit with some rounding right there in that little crevice up at the top. It really does finish it off a lot. Again, rounding is a tough one for me, but um, I'm getting a little bit better, I think. As with everything, it takes practice. But doesn't it give it a nice, pretty look? I think it's such a good finish. One of these days, I will show you guys uh, any Oaken's uh, Mooka 3D. And uh, <laughs> it's not something I'm good at, but it, you know, it's a great way to fix your Mookas and still have them turn out cool. So, uh, you know, we'll work on that. <clears throat> I just cannot keep my voice cleared tonight. Sorry about that. So I just noticed this is an hour and 29 minutes. So I believe that I'm going to be speeding parts of this up for you because, um, well, I might split it between today and tomorrow, or tomorrow and Friday. And, well, today and tomorrow. <laughs> okay, I'm confused now. Anyway, we will see how far about 30 to 40 minutes gets us here, and uh, we'll take it from there. I'm about to sing, so y'all think of something good to talk about. Let's talk about, I know what I want to talk about, something near and dear to my heart. Um, the responsibility that we hold to protect others in society from wrongdoers. How about that? Is that, is that really vague for you? 
Um, my situation on Monday involved sort of a, um, how can I put this without causing an issue? Um, someone was, uh, hmm, <laughs> no, I'm not teasing you, I'm really not. Okay, uh, let me explain it this way. You know how, and this is a really, this nothing about this happened. This is just an example, okay? Don't anybody freak out. Um, well, maybe I can think of a better example because that's really, it's, it's, it's about, something similar to what our responsibility is to society to report people that are hurting others or ourselves as was my case and the tendency to not want to start the drama and so to let things go and I was reminded in a very real way this week that speaking up for yourself and for others is vitally important because if no one knows there is a problem, then it can't be brought to light and it can't be fixed. And um, it's very easy for some personalities to bully and um, it's really important, especially when you're dealing with people in health care, people that care for the elderly or disabled, or children, or um, really anybody. What is our responsibility to others? I mean, I think that's, for me, that's a fairly obvious thing. But rape victims feel very differently about that frequently. And um, many of them have caused themselves great distress to try to help other women not be victims. Uh, so my situation Monday involved me having to deal with a situation like that. And um, it was hard for me. I didn't need the stress of what was going to happen. I did not need um, any more high blood pressure or anything like that. But I felt I had a responsibility to other people that were in my situation to speak up. And so what do you guys think about that? Um, it's such a difficult, it's such a, such a difficult position to be in. And it's easy for some people to do that, to advocate for themselves. Um, but it's difficult for some people, especially people that struggle with confrontation. And that is something I have always struggled with, although I've gotten a lot better at it as I've gotten older. Um, being an advocate for the disabled before I uh, had to stop working was uh, very good for me because it taught me to advocate for myself once I was disabled. And so um, it's important if something wrong is going on, whether you're involved or not, that you report it. And that's my two cents on this. So, it's, you know, stuff is tough all over. And if we don't look out for each other, then we are what people want to make us out to be, which is, you know, just animals. And while I embrace my inner animal and am proud of it, um, I think we as human beings have such a capacity for compassion and grace under pressure that it's important for us to show that and um, have compassion for our fellow man and you know take people into consideration when we're in situations like these so anyway that is my soapbox for today <laughs> and I'm done So you can see what I'm doing. I am just playing with each little section. 
embellishing my little heart out, decorating to my heart's content, whatever comes into my head I am going for. And one of the reasons I am not worrying about how I feel about this at this point is because I've come to understand that art has an ugly stage. And if you understand that and accept it, uh, it's a lot easier to move forward no matter what happens. Which is easy to say sometimes, I admit. But it's sort of like performing in music or any other creative pursuit, you know, if you make a mistake, you keep going, right? And <laughs> there are no mistakes, so you're golden here. Thank goodness. I really needed a place in my life where there were no mistakes. And this is working out really well for me. For you guys that are new in your Zentega walk, I welcome you to one of the warmest communities that I have ever been a part of. Uh, the Zentangle community is full of such compassionate people, such kind people, and um, it is something that I have never, ever once regretted getting into. Um, I started very much on a budget. I'm still on a serious budget, although I buy things all the time that I shouldn't, but, <laughs> um, you know, sometimes you got to have art supplies, and that's just the way it goes. But it's fun and it's relaxing and it um, for all of us who always wanted to draw but never felt like we could it's a beautiful beautiful thing I mean I think I think there there are tons of people out there like me who always wanted to draw but never could figure that out and I think Zentangle managed to or the Zentangle method managed to remove so many roadblocks artistically for me that uh, I'm still just amazed at the thoughtfulness of this process or this method. This is not a Zentangle, um, this is not a Zen Zentangle promo, but um, I think it'll be hard to find a certified Zentangle teacher who is not sort of like this about Zentangle. And you don't have to be a certified Zentangle teacher to feel this way. I know I felt that way for a good three years before I was ever certified, so, and, uh, you know, crazy stuff. So I sort of have something a little basic on uh, most of them. Here's a couple here that I don't. Um, let's see. Hmm, I don't think this is going to work out, but we're going to finish it up follow it to the end and see what happens. Yep, see? <laughs> Those didn't need to be spirals, they just needed to be little balls. Adapting to what you draw is a great technique or a great thing to practice. And believe me, it has taken me a while to get here. Don't give up on yourself. Or me. Don't give up on me, please. I need you guys. I need you to be there for me. You guys make my life better. I want you to know that. That's not just a platitude. That is a real, real feeling. Thank you guys for being part of my YouTube family, if you will. And I really do feel like you guys are part of my family. Thank you for being here with me. Cindy speaking bass today, too. Yeah, see, now I want to sing that Mama Sing... Mom sang bass, old song. <laughs> Mom sang bass, daddy sang. Okay, I have to stop. Copyright complaints. Oh my goodness. The world we live in, it's so litigious. We all need to get over ourselves. All right. Now, I think this is where we're going to stop today. This is a good spot. And I am going to see you guys tomorrow for some color fun.